judgment in the matter of London Borough of Lambeth versus Secretary of State for Housing, Communities and Local Government and others. Lord Carnworth will explain the decision of the court. <laughs> In 1985, the Secretary of State gave planning permission for a retail store in Streatham in the area of the Lambeth Borough Council. The use was limited by planning condition to sale of DIY goods and other specified categories of goods, but excluded good food sales. Now, over the following years, the permitted categories were extended by the Council by consents under Section 73 of the Town and Country Planning Act 1990. Uh, the most recent, which is now in dispute, was evidently intended to allow for unrestricted sale of non-food goods, but still to exclude food sales. Uh, the reason being the traffic which food sales would generate. The consent recorded that the council was approving the variation applied for and set out the proposed wording allowing, quotes, the sale and display of non-food goods only and for no other goods. Unfortunately, the permission did not include a specific condition to that effect, even though it did include other conditions relating to such things as traffic arrangements. On that basis, it was claimed by the owners that there was no legally effective restriction on food sales and that accordingly the lawful use of the store extended to sales of unlimited categories of goods. A certificate to that effect was refused by the council but was granted on appeal by a planning inspector and the decision of the inspector was upheld by the lower courts. Now, the Supreme Court allows the Council's appeal unanimously in a judgment given by myself. Uh, the judgment refers to the authoritative guidance on the interpretation of planning documents and conditions given recently by this court in a case involving the Trump International Golf Club in Scotland. In short, whatever the legal character of the document in question, we said that the starting point for interpretation is to find the natural and ordinary meaning of the words there used, viewed in their particular context and in the light of common sense. From that point of view, the obvious and only natural interpretation of the operative parts of the grant is that the Council was approving what was applied for, that is the variation of the relevant condition from the original wording to the proposed wording, in effect substituting one for the other. There's nothing to indicate an intention to discharge the condition altogether or to remove the restriction on the sale of food goods. The supposed difficulty which led the lower courts to arrive at a different view arises from the fact that although Section 73 is commonly referred to as providing for the variation of a condition, that is not strictly how it works in legal terms. In legal terms, it works not by varying the condition in the existing permission, but by granting a new permission subject to the revised condition. However, if that technical point were to be pressed to its logical conclusion, it would mean that there was no valid grant at all, not that there was a valid grant free from the proposed condition. However, no one has challenged the validity of the grant. Everyone accepts it as a grant of a permission for something, and in the view of the court, it must be taken as it is and in accordance with its natural reading. Now, it is true that there are some internal inconsistencies on the second part of the notice, which imposes the new conditions. It's not a happily drafted document. But reading the document as a whole, the second part can be given a sensible meeting without undue distortion and as explanatory of and supplementary to the first part. The judgment concludes by emphasising that to avoid costly disputes of this kind, it's important that Section 73 concerns in the future are drafted in terms which accurately reflect the statutory power and which include all the intended conditions existing or varied. Thank you. The court will now adjourn.